What's up, y'all? My name is Stilo from Gravity Films, and if you don't know who I am yet, I'm an artist and videographer. And on this channel, we will be covering a myriad of different topics that I think are important to the public and are important to me as well. This interview is the first installment of the Positive Propaganda series. In this series, we will promote positive and useful messages using the same tactics that they use to promote negative and destructive messages. And in the first episode of this series, we have the pleasure of speaking with none other than Brandman Sean himself. And if you don't know who Brandman Sean is, Brandman Sean is probably the most popular music marketer in the world right now. His channel has about 154 thousand subscribers and he has billboard hits under his belt including the number one billboard hit moved by 24k golden so without further ado let's get into the interview ah! gravity films we got another interview let us know who we have here yo 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 it's brand man sean what's up man brand man sean okay so you know i've been following you since about i would say 2017 and i remember the first video that you did uh it was for, it was about Fetty Wap and how yeah. Fetty Wap, you know, started to take off. And when you first dropped that video, I started watching all your content after that. Mm. So let me ask you this. How exactly did you get into the marketing and branding space? Man, that's a good question. It really started with just being a creative and being someone who loved business as I grew as well. Like, I've always been at that intersection. Like, when I was probably, like, seven years old, I was drawing pictures and selling them to people when I was young, right? Mm -hmm. and, and every iteration, like, as I grew, it was always doing one thing or other. And eventually I got to a point, though, where I would just create, like, what I thought would be really cool stuff, whether it was something that was, like, a product or it was something that might have been more artistic. And it didn't get the attention that I thought it should get, mm -hmm. right? And at some point I was just like, you know what? I keep noticing that the loudest things are the ones that are getting the attention. Stuff that's what, what that I think isn't as good as what I'm doing. Or even when I was playing sports, I was like, ah, this dude, I'm better than this dude, but this dude making a fuss and he's making friends with the coach. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, I start to realize people who are more vocal or get their things out there are getting the attention. And that started my journey to become a marketer and I didn't know I was being a marketer. I never said I want to do a marketer, be a marketer. I never said I want to um, even be in business in that way. It was always, I created something cool and I wanted to figure out how to get attention for it. And mm -hmm. that just happened to be what marketing and branding was. When you say that you wanted to get attention for your creative works, yeah. what exactly, what type of creative works were you doing? Like, were you rapping? Were you singing? Like, were you drawing? Like what, what type of stuff were you doing exactly? I would still draw, paint. Um, I would create just little projects in general. So some of it wasn't like the direct idea of like art, but it would be like I put on together maybe a cool event or something like that that I thought should get more, way more attention. Mm -hmm. And then I get, didn't get the turnout that I thought I should have. Um, and then some things are more like business, like straight up. Like, oh, here's an entrepreneurship club that I'm a part of and I'm supposed to be teaching, how do I get people to show up mm -hmm. and I'm in charge of it? And I'm not getting the turnout that I want to get to. Yeah. So it's just like, all right, you know what? Just because something is free doesn't mean people are going to show up. Just because cause people actually submit their information and buy a ticket, well, not even buy a ticket, claim a ticket for something that's free. It's like, all right, yeah, but there's no incentive for them to show up necessarily mm -hmm. because they didn't pay for it. So it's easy for them to like do something else as well, mm -hmm. right? So it's just like learning those little things over time. But yeah, it would be a lot of stuff, man. I had so many like random projects. Like I remember, I remember like even like I would play with Yu Gi Oh cards. I and, play with Yu Gi Oh cards too. Yeah, man. And, sure. and there was this one of their seasons. It might have been the first season. They went through this labyrinth, right? Mm -hmm. And I actually like made a whole labyrinth. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, for real, like, instructed out of, like, boxes and stuff like this. And I was trying to get that game out there, a version, and start, like, a little tournament or something around it. So it was just like, I always just had something, man, that I was putting together, and I wanted to get attention for it one way or another. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if I, I, my, I always dreamed big in terms of vision. And anything less of that usually mm -hmm. meant that I couldn't, like, I just had to figure it out. Let's just put it that way. Most definitely. So when you say like you had to figure out that just because uh, art project was good, that 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 doesn't necessarily means it is going to garner the attention that you want. 
when you figure that out and you figured out like you had to market your ideas, did the creative side in you kind of die at that point? Because I feel like a lot of people don't want to, a lot of artists don't want to accept that because like they feel like the creative part of them will die at that part, at that point. Yeah, nah, man. Like people don't even see me as an artist and I'm way more creative than most of the people that mm. like I do business with when they consider themselves an artist and things like that. Like, I don't, to me, it's just another canvas to paint, right? Mm. Like there are certain elements and fundamentals that you can't avoid that aren't like creative, right? It's like this is the technique, You're like profit right mm -hmm. or you do this amount of activity and you're only going to get a percentage of that there's certain fundamentals you need to understand but even in great art like the people who like really do it they still combine art and science mm -hmm. i feel like the peak of creativity is always going to be a converse combination of art and science like einstein talked about the value of creativity and you think about this guy as a scientist and he put creativity on a pedestal this man came up with a theory of relativity in his mind he imagined like cars mm -hmm. go moving and trains moving like and and came up with that that way and then if you look at a a great artist there's a reason that we can mimic many great artists because they had their own way of doing things they mm -hmm. created their own science you know what i mean i could say this bar like how drake would say it right there's always a technique that you can find in the art and but the greatest um science requires creativity to make happen most you know definitely I mean? do you believe in the concept of having like either your creative or your business minded because i feel like a lot of people have that idea like either you're the creative or you're the business no nah, man i've just been blessed to always have both so i mm -hmm. kind of don't understand like maybe when people are, say that yeah, I really just don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, it just sounds like excuses yeah. <laughs> or, or just like it's frustrating. Like, I don't understand people don't who don't have creativity. And, mm -hmm. I, and I don't understand people who, like, get so frustrated with any aspect of business. There's a level of disciplining and patience that it requires. Mm -hmm. If you're, like, a creative person and it's like, all right, now I need to, like, box myself in. But... When you think through it, creativity doesn't really exist without any constraints, right? Mm. So let's say business as a constraint for your creativity actually forces you to be even more creative. Mm. If you still value the creativity, and how do I find a solution? How do I come up with a new outcome within this? Or how do I take this basic thing and make it dope, mm. right? And something that meets my taste. So... I think when people choose one or the other, they're really just settling. But for me, I don't ever settle. I I know that there might be a period of time where I'm more focused on one than another because I'm building and I don't have all the resources to just hire people to do all of them, you know, and, hey, handle this side, handle, handle that side. So I have to make the sacrifice. But I guess that's what, what the issue is. Maybe some people are afraid of making the sacrifice and they think it takes away from their identity. But I just don't look at it that way. I see myself as all of it. Yeah. You know, the reason why I ask that question is because, you know, a lot of artists that I talk to, they want to focus on the art and how good the art is. And they believe if the art is good, it is going to get out there. Right. But I feel like the reason why they champion that, that idea is that they don't want to feel like they're not being creative or they don't want to feel like they're not an artist. And I believe the art starts or the creativeness starts when you have to figure out how to market, when you don't have the funds. It's like a person being in jail and they got to figure out how to get out or yeah. how to cook or how to make this key to, you know what I'm saying, make a lock mm -hmm. or something. I feel like when you're back against the wall and you have to figure something out, that's when you get creative like you were just saying. Sure. Yeah, it definitely just takes it to the next level. It's like, how do I do this, maintain the purity of it as mm -hmm. much as possible and do this other thing, right? And the people, the end product just shows how much you care. There's some people who sacrifice the purity of it completely. There's some people who, all right, I'm going to sacrifice 97%, 3%, whatever that number is. And some people are like, it's going to be zero. But, you know, by these definitions and the way people think of art in many cases, we probably don't know the greatest artists in the world, hmm. right? Like, if you just want to talk about someone who only puts their time into art, your favorite artist, the reason you know them is because of marketing. 
Mm-hmm. Like, so people will be like, oh, these people suck right now. And and it's because they're being marketed. But why do you think, you know, the person that you say, oh, yeah, but that person from 10 years ago, like he was the real Jay-Z was the real or Prince was the real. They all got marketed to us. That's mm-hmm. the only reason we know. Most definitely. So I want to get into marketing. Right. I know you had like a big campaign with mood with 24K Golden. Mm-hmm. Could you tell me how that came about? If you can speak on it. How it like took off or like how you even got the campaign? Yeah, how you even got the campaign. So. Because the reason, because, you know, a lot of people from where I'm from, they're going to see this interview and they're going to be like, okay, so this guy's talking about marketing. What exactly has he done if they don't know you? You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm going to give most definitely. I mean, honestly, Golden hit me up. Mm. That was how I got started. Um, so he, he saw your YouTube channel, or yeah, something like that? He, okay. he had been a viewer of the channel. Uh, you know, had a lot of cool people like over the years that have just come to learn to uh, have watched the channel or watched some of the videos. Like I remember around that time, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite people that would comment here and there, especially if I did a video on him, was Ugly God. Um, Cause I always thought he was, I just thought he was a dope and interesting character the way he approached stuff. And then um, after Lil Nas X blew up with uh, Old Town Road, he commented on the channel and was like, "Yo, I used to watch your videos all the time and things like that." It's been like a lot of different characters and many of the people that we've now worked with over the years on the exec side or the art side. They've watched the channel, came across the content, or somebody who uh, worked for them. But yeah, that's how we how that campaign came about. Like he just hit me up, and we had some convos and started working. Uh, and I don't want to go too deep on his side um, because like that's his story, and I don't know how he wants to approach me. But what I can say like I found it dope as young as he was mm-hmm. um, to like take his own marketing in his own hands mm. and not just say yeah I got some people or a situation around me, and I don't want to take any part of it at all and he's a consistent person with that like there'll be a lot going on he might have infrastructure and and, and systems and some money you know even to this day but if he can think of an idea um that he wants to run or he'll maybe hit me up to check or i'm sure he has other people that he hits up to like test certain ideas Mm -hmm. or he'll just ask somebody else outside of his own system like yo what do you think and I think that takes a, a special mind. And like immediately when I first talked to him, I was like, "This dude's smart as hell." Um, but yeah, that the one like know that it's possible. Like a lot of people, like I feel like a lot of people think they have to just run with their team and they can't talk to anybody else mm-hmm. or leverage anything. But but two, I've seen something similar in most people that have gone to like another level or they've built their own unique path, like. The Russell's doing that now. Everything I hear about him, everything I got when I talk talk to him, it's like he has his own way of taking. You know, his, he has different tastes than Golden, but it's his own version of taking things in his own hand. Mm-hmm. You look back at Kanye, his stories, and the the documentary, taking things into his own hand and getting stuff done right, and that's that's business, right? You look mm-hmm. at a Kanye, he was doing business. like taking a business he approach was both. He, to how he, he was executed, creative. right? Yeah. It's all right. Um, who else? Russ is like that. I've never, well, I have spoke with Russ early on, but that was far before he blew up and it wasn't like a deep conversation or anything. Um, but like, yeah, everybody, if you point, it, point them out, the ones who are doing like a unique path, especially the ones who are indie today, they have some level of like, I'm just going to get this thing done. We see it the most popular in street artists because mm. they come from the hustle and that's just like the way we do it. Like there's no, you don't hear them complaining like about, Oh yeah, I gotta do this. I gotta do that. For the most part, the ones who are really in it, because that one, they're just trying to get out. Two, like as long as it doesn't require them to, I don't know, mess up any of their like situations, mm-hmm. right? Like they're pretty much like, all right, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do. I work all the time anyway. I'm not complaining about having to work hard, and I'm and I know that it takes work to get money mm-hmm. in the first place. So. Honestly, I feel like a lot of people should pay attention to street artists. The only problem I have with street artists, man, is some of them 
will like act funny with technology like like you don't know how to read an email or something or, oh my god they don't know how to or, download anything yeah work a zoom call i'll be like bro come on bro like come on like, yeah yeah you can just hit me on the phone bro this, this zoom thing i don't know about like how to it's crazy. like <laughs> but other than that bro their, their hustle is outrageous and i feel like uh artists in other categories like should definitely take advantage of that same type of mentality because it, it is what it is you have to have it. if you want to be at the top Right, whatever the top is to you, because mm-hmm. we don't have to talk about the commercial top. If you, if you want to make your dream happen, it should be by any means necessary within, you know, certain realms of ethics. Making a TikTok isn't really that bad, bro. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And there's, and I'm, and I'm just using that example. There's so many little things, and there's different that, ways you can make a TikTok. It, you can make a street TikTok, a street nigga TikTok. Bro, you know? it is. <laughs> I always tell people. People say like, "Yo, I don't want to do nothing corny." I'm like, "Bro." Corny's only gonna come out if it's in you. Mm. Like you're the one making a video. Like yeah. it don't have to be corny. So like figure out what your version is, your taste. But I think when people see stuff that works, they don't understand that they don't have to do it exactly like mm-hmm. what's working. Like I don't want to dance. It's like no, I, I didn't say you had to dance. Who brought that up? You know what I mean? So that's the I think that's the problem versus understanding. I understand there's a there's a water hole here, right? There's a pond. That everybody can drink from, and I got I just got to drink from that go to that pond and drink from it. But I don't have to do it the exact same way. I don't have to ride a horse to get there. Mm-hmm. You know, I could drive a car to get there. I could run there. There's different ways to mm-hmm. get to that same place, but that is the place to go. Like that's the part to understand. Mm-hmm. Like how, but it's just like how can I do the science of figuring out how to tweak it with my own voice? I do a lot of videos like my. There's people who do the style of videos that I do from their own voice. All right. There's people who are going to yell and come at you real like aggressive. Right. Mm-hmm. And do that stuff. There's people who are going to be like more on the like yoga, you know, spiritual zen approach, shit, zen yeah. and be super nice and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I have my approach and just I stay in my bag. I don't co- like there's certain people who copy, uh, not copy. Like touch on those topics that are like super negative and the industry's always evil. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't do any of that stuff, right? But I still exist in my space. Like so it's just like be you. Yeah, exactly. Cause I feel like there's fans that are just like you, you know, that are gravitate to who you are because they're like you. So yeah. if you have a more calm tone, more calm people may gravitate towards you or people that like that sort yeah. of thing. Like, yeah, I can't take these other folks yelling at me. They'll tell you. They'll be like, bro, I appreciate you. For just, not yelling at yeah, me. Yeah, for not yelling at me. Yeah. And then the vice versa. There'll be people like, oh, yeah, I needed that, man. You woke me up today. You know, and the type of person that you are when you build your base, and this goes into building your fan base, you want to put out that your authentic energy because, trust me, you invite a bunch of people trying to be something that you aren't. Mm-hmm. You aren't going to want to be around your fan base. You're going to hate your fans. Most definitely. I've had an artist that built a nice little fan base and he was like, bruh, I don't like these people. Like, at all. I don't like I, these like, people. Like, for real. It's crazy. For real. <laughs> like, low key, he was, his fan base was kind of racist or whatever, but they didn't even know what he looked like. Oh, Yeah, man. so it was, which was a whole nother thing or whatever. Yeah. But it was just like, hey, man, you, you have this strong, hardcore fan base <laughs> and like, what you gonna do? You gonna lean into it and then try to rebrand, or are you gonna start from ground zero? And you know he's still pending with that, but but yeah, it's it's all, I learned it from when I was doing events, and it's as simple as the energy that you promote mm. is the energy that comes to the party. You tell them that just a twerk fest, people come expecting to twerk or receive twerk. So. You know what I mean? So. But you tell them it's going to be the artsy chill vibe, that's what they come to. And then mm-hmm. you start seeing other stuff happen. You're like, oh, that's not, it's a pajama party. People bring pajamas. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so that's, it's as simple as that, man. Put out the energy that you want to come to your party. Mm. Let me ask you this. I don't know if you still hear this, but I hear this from a lot of people in Virginia. Maybe it's because we don't have the culture or the infrastructure of marketing advice or marketing information. But a lot of artists feel like they want to make it organically. Do you still get people that come to you saying that, oh, they want to make it organically. They don't want to do any ads. They don't want to do any promotion. They're just going to keep putting out music and eventually it's going to go up. I do. How do you feel about that? I do, but I get way less of it because, again, I promote the energy I want to attract. And I put out a lot of like people think 
that it's about hiding the game. Me, I put as much of it out there as possible because if you do ever work with me, I don't want to waste time explaining the fundamentals. Mm. Like, we here to ball and win a championship. I don't need to explain to you, like, what your form should look like when you're shooting a jump shot. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So, like, I put it all out there. That's helped where there's minimal clients that have that issue. However, there's they, they exist here and there. Um, and... You know, one, my thought is you just got to learn first and foremost. Um, two, the question is why? Like, what kind of weird ego trip is that? Mm-hmm. Like, I only want to win this way. We're, again, we're not talking about, like, violating your code of ethics. Mm-hmm. You know, I think what the reality is some people hide behind the fact that they're insecure and mm-hmm. they're afraid of looking like they're trying hard so they don't want to try hard. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to look like I'm advertising because that's going to seem lame. I don't want anybody like, um, uh, like he's trying to get my attention and he, who does he think he is? Because mm. that's the type of thinking that they have when they see people doing stuff like that. Mm. But what happens is five, ten years later, that same person that you were hating on like has an established career and has more success than you. And now you got to look internally and be mm. like, dang, was I just a hater or was I just seeing the world wrong in the first place? Because that's what it is a lot of times. You stop yourself from doing the things that you look down on. And why do you look down on it? I, you know, that's a therapy session. I don't, uh, you know, I can't have that conversation <laughs> with the world. The, you know what I mean? You don't have to go through it. To see. Yeah, but it works. Mm-hmm. It works. And a big problem is a lot of artists are led to believe that money isn't being put up and things are all happening organically mm-hmm. because we're in an industry where smoke screen it's all about smoke screens Mm. and i don't like to try to make it all about being evil or not or people just trying to trick everybody else but the reality is this is the entertainment industry Mm. i went to monique's talk show the comedian back like four years ago i don't know she had a talk show on late night bt and i was amazed because being there and then watching it later the show was shot in a completely different order than it appeared on TV. Mm. Like, I remember Ghostface Killer was there, and he, like, I don't know, he performed near the beginning, and then, but he performed on the end, near the end and when I watched the episode, like- right? Because, but it all came, I like, when I thought about it, like, put my business cap on and looked at things, they had to move, like, different sets and things around, so it was like, let's record everything from this mm. angle that we need with the stage like this before we change the stage, you know, like, and we need to say it should look like this. We need to make sure we get all the shots and conversations like this or whatever. So it made sense why they did it. But I was like, this is TV magic. This is movie magic. I've heard those phrases. Mm-hmm. And you know that you could take a picture of a house and then on a real estate site, that thing look beautiful and big. But in reality, it's like, oh, this ain't all that. Or you know that somebody can be, you know, bad in a picture and not so cute in person. Sure. Right. It's It's the same thing in this industry. We're trying to be larger than life you as an artist that's exactly what you're trying to do be larger in life to the rest of the world Mm -hmm. right put on this magic show they don't need to see what's behind the curtains and that's just the nature of the industry but you have to take off your consumer hat and -hmm. look at this thing as a professional if you want to be successfully professionally you know what i mean most definitely and i feel like a lot of people don't want to don't want to be like go through the smoke screen they don't want to see the other end of things yeah. they want to they want to be entertained they want to you know ign- they say ignorance is bliss they yeah. want to be in that bliss so let me transition to this so if an artist cuz one of my goals with this podcast right is i want people to look at it, be able to look at this podcast and artists be able to look at this podcast and get a how to on the steps to take in their, you know, the steps to take in their career. If they want to start getting more views or they want to start making more money with their music. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think for an artist that's ready to take it serious and say they got a thousand dollars in their pocket, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think is the first step of an artist to, you know, start off their career? First, if you only got a thousand dollars in your pocket, I'm going to tell you not to spend it. Mm hmm. I'm going to tell you to drop content first. Okay. All right. Drop content, drop content, and some more content till you start seeing what's working before you spend that little bit of money that you have. And I know it feels like a lot, but trust me, it's not a lot of money in the scope of life, and it's definitely not a lot of money in music where you don't get your music, your money back as fast as mm-hmm. selling some hats or T-shirts or whatever. You get what I mean? So make sure before you deploy that capital, you actually 
figure out that it's the best space to spend it in. So I'm gonna drop some videos, 10 videos, 20, 30 videos, testing my songs, different songs, mm -hmm. and see which one hits the best. Even if it's just one song, you only have one song, drop 10 to 30 videos, like shorts, and then see which one people are rocking with better, which one is better in an algorithm, and even if it doesn't go crazy algorithmically, at least see which one like people are commenting on a little mm -hmm. bit stronger. It seems like they're feeling it. Then you might spend five dollars a day, ten dollars a day on um, Instagram testing the top three of those, and then keep rolling from there. Like, I'm not gonna go into the mechanics of the exact like ad setup because yeah, yeah, for sure, just that's a long time for sure. You know what I mean? That'll confuse you. Uh, everybody just listening without like a screen share or something. But like, do that. Right, test and then run ads and then keep dropping content because another piece of content might pop up while you're running ads that does even better. And now you know, oh, now I want to run an ad on this piece of content. That's the, the cleanest and simplest strategy. Yes, things can get more nuanced, but if you start there, you're on the right path and you're just steps away, you know, one step at a time, becoming a better marketer. Okay, so creating content. So, do you think they should like kind of shape out? their image first and stuff like that with the content or you don't think really the image their image you know matters that much in the beginning and when i say image i mean more so like their videos looking professional 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 your image photos doesn't matter in and, the beginning okay your image does not matter in the beginning and i'll tell you what i mean by that if you don't have a certain level of visibility your image isn't landing anyway mm -hmm. right now, if you're an artist who's about who's about to be signed by a label or a management team and there's a certain level of experience and infrastructure there. So they know that we can just turn on a certain level of visibility like pretty quickly. All right. Now we can take a little bit more time developing and curating an uh, image. Mm -hmm. But the problem is people are are copying the advanced level game from the more corporate like infrastructure when they haven't made it there yet. When they Not even about making it there. When that's just not the game you're running. You're running the yeah, independent yeah. business game. Okay, okay. Right? It's like me starting a company today and I'm saying, oh, yeah, I'm doing this because this is how Google does it. Mm -hmm. Like, that doesn't make sense. You got to run things how you can run it to get the most out of your limited resources. You know what I mean? So, because of that, it's you can perfect things over time. Right? You build the plane while you're in the air mm. versus try to tweak everything, make sure that it's perfect. Most definitely. So, you said they should do a lot of content, right? How many pieces of content should a person do, like, every week? Every week? Three to five minimum. Three to five. Minimum. Yeah. And that gets you in the habit. Three to five. And then you start catching stuff. You start learning. And then, you know, turn up during promo time. Like, oh, I'm about to release, like, a, a bigger project or a bigger song. I really want to, like, go hard because it's pre rollout or post rollout but at least if you can stay consistent three to five it's not going to be as anxious you know mm -hmm. anxiety inducing it's uh and it's sustainable i'm all about sustainability versus i gotta go crazy and mm -hmm. then i'm all of a he's sudden short he's yeah, short yeah, out you just yeah. short out and it's over yeah no nah, i think that's what me and nigel did when we were promoting our when we were promoting my project you know we had a lot of money up front and then, like, as it was going, as it was, that we were getting streams and stuff, we didn't have any money to, you know, keep it going. And I think if we would have did, like, maybe $10 a day and just mm -hmm. kept it going for a year or, or a year or two, you know, I think that would have, you know, helped keep up the buzz. Because if you stop and you stop putting out content and you stop putting out music, then your buzz is going to, you know, you're going to have to build it up again. Yeah, you end up starting from ground zero. Maintaining momentum is way more important than having a moment and then dying off. Fizzling out. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, this is why, again, it's about staying consistent, finding a moment, right? Using that moment to learn and then re rinse, repeat. Uh, I'm putting out content consistently. I might may, maybe running ads for a cheap amount consistently. I'm just taking that information and then I'm using it to be more accurate. Mm -hmm. I, I always say find the bullseye. Uh, you're marketing, you're trying to get as close to the bullseye as possible. You have a certain level of experience like me. You can get closer to the bullseye mm -hmm. and sometimes hit the bullseye right out the gate. 
But still, most of the times, it's not right on that bullseye. So you got to get back there. You throw that first one, and you can feel, okay, I need to, like, tweak my throw yeah. just a little bit. That's what the whole process of marketing is. Guess the best you can. And then, like, get closer based on the feedback. All right? And that's why you can't spend too much time on something like image because people don't get started. So now that we underline some of the steps, you know, the first step is if you don't have a lot of money, make sure you create content. You know, the second step is test that content. And the third step is once you get a piece of content that's working, make sure you keep it going until you really can't anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. In recent years, what's one of the best marketing campaigns that you've witnessed? Witnessed? Mm -hmm. I think the Ice Spice marketing was the best I've witnessed. Okay. Because to me, to get her where she is as fast as they got her there was ridiculous based on the amount of music that she had. I mean, they made it stick. Mm -hmm. You know, like usually, to be real, like the type of music she dropped and the amount that she had at that moment to get that much hype, she would have been gone by now. Most artists. Mm -hmm. But the fact that she had an image like the red hair, right? Like just and the like, because that's not even her natural hair. People would think that the whole little afro. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Like so, everything was intentional. Okay. And, and then keeping her in conversation and understanding there's an outcome at the end of that. And that's how I knew the team had to be like dope because a lot of people look at the front end investment. They don't understand what it takes to build an image, right? They don't understand the financial investment it takes to be in conversation. They think, oh, all of this is just because. But you have to pay people usually to be talked about until you get to a point where- They just talking about you. They just talking about you mm -hmm. and they might even be paying you to mm -hmm. be able get to talk story. about you or have you come and talk to them. But that's usually what it looks like. But again, most artists are just seeing other artists marketing. They're still on the consumer side of it, so they don't think about it that way. Like, oh man, how do I get like that? It's like, oh, do you want to pay what the artist paid? So that's how I knew she had a team that was like, oh man, yeah, I know what it looks like to get paid, posted on these pages. I know what it looks like and how much it costs and things like that. And the fact that she's in these conversations and they're still making sure, and I know that it doesn't mean money directly today mm -hmm. in a way that you can measure, then like kudos to them because a lot of people don't have the gear to go that heavy on it like it takes faith it takes vision mm -hmm. and i think that's what a lot of artists run into uh, just to be real it's like a lack of vision so it's hard to it's hard if i don't see anything validating my vision mm -hmm. then it's hard for me to put keep it going. in for my own yeah, yeah. yeah. you, you know? gotta keep believing yep but outside of music, like what's some other marketing campaigns that you've seen that are crazy? You know, it could be like, uh, what's the what's the one guy that does like real estate or um, he shows up in YouTube ads all the time? Grant Cardone, Grant Cardone. Or, or like, oh, you know, it could, be, it could be any marketing campaign. Gary Vaynerchuk did like a basically a PR rollout throughout like popular culture and hip-hop culture for like a two-year period that went crazy mm -hmm. that's how i looked at it like all of a sudden he's popping up with all these young kids and audiences and they made himself relevant to that audience that was a genius brilliant move um there was this campaign i heard about uh it was like a 23 and me campaign mm -hmm. well it wasn't a 23 and me campaign let me take that back i think they have what is a, what does 23 and me mean? 23 and me i believe that's where you Test like DNA to see who your relatives are. Okay, okay. All right, I think that's the name of the company. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, <laughs> a guy, well, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. Somebody would like tweet, it would be like a, a hot girl or whatever. It's like white chick and it's like, I'm looking for a donor or something like that, right? To, I guess she wanted to have a baby. Or something like that. Basically implied like some type of sex. Mm -hmm. And this person can't be, can't be black, can't be X, Y, and Z. And it was mm -hmm. alluding to like all these super like white, like blue eyed type traits. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the, I forgot the name of the group. Like I guess like Aryan type traits. And it was like borderline like racist, right? Mm -hmm. Not borderline, it was pretty racist. Like the whole way it was being put out. And it was that intentionally, not even like, oh, I'm intent, like I'm interpreting that. It was kind of put out in that way. Because it was wild to see someone putting those things out there intentionally, it was going crazy viral. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. But on the other end, you got these guys being like, hey, dang, bro, I, I fit this. Yeah, for sure. You know, Shawty, Shawty kind of cute. And, you know, yeah. dudes are lonely these days, you know, the way the whole the internet is set up. But at least that's what I'm hearing. I'm not experiencing that. But, you know, that's what I hear. So dudes are submitting. And then when you go down the funnel, like I think you had to DM her first. And so she could be sure you didn't have a drop of no Negro blood or some of this other blood. You had to do a 23 me test. And this person, it came out, this person was basically an affiliate. Like, mm. that was, like, you know, you can get affiliates to a lot of these sites without even being a part of the company. You just sign up to their random affiliate. Mm. And they were just making, like, $60,000, like, quickly over and over again by putting out these crazy things and just preying on people's, you know what I mean? That's crazy. Weirdness. But I, thought, I was like, I thought, I was like, dang, that's oh, yeah. some evil genius shit at the same time. So, like, stuff like that. You know, I, I geek out about stuff like that because it's, it's interesting how easy it is to manipulate people um, and these campaigns that happen all the time. Like, it ruins it for me, maybe, in one way, but at the same time, it frustrates me. So it ruins it because I can't experience some of the pure magic of some of these campaigns that happen yeah. and fall into the the bliss of ignorance because yeah. you're analyzing Cause i'm analyzing it and mm. i know that it's not real in like 98 percent of the cases and then the other side is it frustrates me when i'm like why are y'all falling for this but then at the same time I'm like oh yeah this is why i'm able to exist and help mm. other artists and other people do those things because people will fall for it that's just the nature of it and we all can't be on guard at 100 percent of the time i might be watching him and then you finesse me with a marketing campaign that I didn't even see coming. Mm -hmm. Or it's a category that I know less about. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I was like, I know how to catch it in music and entertainment and a lot of, you know, business in general, but I might not even know enough about your category and you and you catch me slipping. So it's like, and that's the whole point. It's like, let's keep people distracted enough for these marketing campaigns to work. Uh, but yeah, man, like I can go, oh, Stanley Cup. They have a marketing campaign going crazy. I was just talking to somebody on the way over here that, you know what Stanley Cup is? No. All right. So this is, at first I was like, you talking about Stanley Cup? Like like the soccer or something. Like a uh, hockey. It a, it's a hockey. hockey or, yeah. Okay, I don't know. I was like, you talking about that? <laughs> and he was like, nah, like the cup, you know those cups where it's like they keep stuff cold or warm? Or oh, okay. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Vibes? Oh, yeah, for sure. Those can't stay on on the shelves. Mm. I'm like those, those little basic things. But, but apparently one they have been making it more like appeasing and coming out with colors that um, appease to women because apparently there's categories of women that really, really, really love those like mo soccer moms and shit yeah. like that, right? But two, there was this thing that I still, I think it's either, it, either so this is what happens that always makes the skepticism right. Even when something does happen for real, mm -hmm. usually you don't find out about it without marketing. So it's like, okay, maybe you really did slip off the stairs, but hey, he didn't know about it if I didn't make sure it get posted on the profile. Mm. You gave some money to a school, but the only reason he knows about it is because I marketed it to him, right? Mm. Or I could make something up completely and construct. But so this scenario, Stanley Cup was like, it was a card that caught on fire, and the only thing that was left was the cup like and the mm. ice was still oh in yeah, the cup. yeah yeah that yeah, shit yeah, 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 that yeah, was yeah. what got things okay popping, okay okay right? okay yeah that was what got things rolling and then they've just been capping off of it and new campaign and new campaign off of it. it's like i don't know if that was real or not but like little stuff like that and that's and that's the thing people don't realize because i will say that i mean i kind of already said it but i, I want to put it like drive it through there is a lot of stuff that is real but we realize oh shit this is something that can be a moment mm -hmm. so let's make it a moment 21 savage when he said it's a knife in that interview and buddy asked him he really said it's a knife like that he wasn't like trying to be a meme mm -hmm. but he became a meme and he made Issa his thing he owned Issa, came yeah. out with a project named Issa. you know what i mean like that's intentionally that's intentional marketing based off of something that happened in the real world and a lot of people a lot of times people miss that because they're so in their head trying to create this whole masterminded campaign that they miss out on the stuff that's happening in the real world that's already working they're already telling you that that's gonna grab their attention because they're talking about it mm -hmm. you just need to make sure more people find out about something that got proven most definitely and that's interesting because i was watching an interview that bandman kevo mm -hmm. did with fresh and fit 
And a lot of the things that he was, well, one of the things that he was talking about is like, I think his tattoos had went viral or it was something that people were taught or it was like- He had beat. fake abs. Yeah, he had fake abs. But what he said he did was once he saw people were talking about it, he prayed like Say Cheese to post it. He yes, paid he, exactly. uh, the shade room to yeah. post it. He added fuel on the fire because he already seen that it was going up and it was going to go up. Yeah. Every little thing, man. Mm. Like It's like, oh, let's exploit it, get maximum attention for it. And an artist like him, man, and someone who gets that and willing to make themselves the butt of a joke for him mm -hmm. for a period of time. Yeah, that means he wants it. That means he wants it and he understands the game as a whole mm -hmm. because you're going to get the last laugh at the end of the day. No matter what, no matter how perfect or bad you might be or whatever, people are going to find something to make fun of or dislike about you if you get enough attention. So you might as well be the one pulling the strings. Most definitely. Most definitely. So you can benefit. Let me ask you this, though. This is one, like, because me doing my own marketing campaigns, you know, I promote different things. You know, I'm a videographer. I have my own listing space company. And sometimes I try to implement the same type of marketing to a different business, and it doesn't work as well. Like, my dad has a roofing company, and he puts out signs everywhere, and that works well for him. But if I put out signs for my videography company, that might not work as well for me. So how do you figure out what marketing route to go to for a specific business? First, get a sense of who your customers are. Mm. And a lot of times people are using marketing in the beginning to figure out who those people are, who are going to respond to this. But then you got to figure out, are those my ideal customers? Do I like the people who are responding to this? Because, ah, mm -hmm. no, nah, these people broke. They yeah. can't afford the roof. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? They hit me up asking dumb questions or weird questions you know what i mean so there's that and then try to figure out where they are in general and then what they typically respond to mm -hmm. so like you said roofing if i'm a person with a house right i'm probably going to put it in a neighborhood mm -hmm. right where people have houses i'm not going to put this in the middle of an apartment complex yeah, nobody they don't has own it. a roof yeah, yeah they, they don't can. own it right mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense right so it's really just about understanding the specific audience and then you just translate it based on how those people act and people act differently in different spaces no different than people act differently on instagram versus tiktok like it's the same person but i'm consuming different when i'm on tiktok vibes youtube vibes i'm here for a different type of information a different type of time mm -hmm. it's like talking with a different group of fans or going to a different club or even the same club on different nights you know what i mean mm -hmm. r&b ver night versus hip-hop night in general like uh, your people are looking for different things, so it's really about understanding what is their mind going through mm -hmm. in when they're looking to solve the problem that you're solving for them, mm -hmm. right? And are you solving a problem for them, like for your your videography business? Like, are you solving a problem for people, and, are, and is it a certain type of person that you're providing it for? Yes, yeah, a certain type of person. What? Like rappers. I do rappers music specifically. Yeah, for sure. All right, so like. You, you probably not gonna have no signs out there for yeah, sure. Yeah. It's less signs, it's less rappers out here, like just in the house and in the neighborhood moving in that way. Maybe you happen to hit more of them if you put a sign in front of a club or something mm -hmm. like that. But we know plenty of them are on YouTube or they're on the rap pages mm -hmm. or something like that. Or you know, you can, uh, of course, just run an ad and you call them out like very straightforward. And there's some types of marketing people don't necessarily want to be advertised to advertised to yeah mm -hmm. it has to be a little bit slicker and you got to figure out what that's like oh do i need to mm -hmm. get in a part get into some club right and get my name moving around and have yeah. people talking about it so it looks like i have high status i have to feel like i'm less successful and uh, not accessible accessible mm -hmm. for them to want to do business with me because that's the expectation i want it to feel exclusive mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i'm being I want something different when I'm get, paying you to solve a problem. But when I want this this Gucci or whatever, I want to feel like I'm doing some shit that somebody else isn't doing mm -hmm. or I'm getting access to something. So it, it shouldn't feel as easy. So that's why I'm paying more money for it. There's been plenty of products that have sold more when people rose the price because of the perception, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to realize not just where do I find the people, but like- The psychology of the why- The psychology of why they're trying to buy this particular thing mm -hmm. you know what i mean so how do you go about trying to find this psychology though because like okay so i do a lot of music videos right 
but I'm trying to do weddings. So I'm like, okay, how do I, because I'm not getting married, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or anytime soon. So I'm like, all right, how do I put my mind in the in the space of a person that's going to get married if I'm not, you know what I'm saying? In that yeah, space. I would say one of the best ways is to walk through it, man. You want to mm-hmm. do a little mock marriage to a chick just to go mock, through the motions, okay, you know okay. what I mean? You, that might, that's, nah, that's that might help you out. But, that's dope. like, just, if one, if you know somebody that's married, mm-hmm. Or at least know somebody who that knows a lot about the marriage process. I okay. say the marriage process. I'm talking about like a wedding planner or something like that. Wedding planning, or no, a lot of these just home girls, bro. Like okay. I, I, I've, I've known girls that have been a part of I don't know how many bachelorette parties and things like that. Like you just and even them, they know well what's happening when, when you're planning for the bachelorette party. There's just all these like nuances to weddings, bro. That I just have no idea about until I went through the process myself. Mm. You know what I mean? But I would hear but the girls already knew like, oh, you didn't know that? Girls who aren't married. Right? Mm. So like if you ask them about the process and what people are looking for or even just talk to someone who's married. Um and then there's different categories of like types of married people like it's it legit is like what do you want? Mm. Like what are you looking for? What is, what is the um what are the things that matter most to you? And people are willing to pay more money. In the marriage process, once someone's getting married, bro, like tax, the numbers look stupid. Yeah, it's crazy. Bro. It's Just crazy. for some chairs or something like this. Mm-hmm. But there's this and this lure. This uh, oh, not yeah. not even a lure. So I, it's a device. I just call it reframing, and it's why people like change the name of of things over and over again. Because once I change the name. I can reframe and control how you think about it. Mm. Like we keep changing the name of what we call one group or another. Like every group in society has been called like like yeah. just like how we were colored black negro like all all that stuff. And mm-hmm. you can look at other subsets and, and groups, special interest groups. Like once I say, oh no, we're we're it's not this, it's that. Well, now you have to learn what that is. It's a different right expectation. It's for a that. different. I can control the expectation. Mm-hmm. So once I say, oh no, this is how things go when it comes to weddings. Mm. I can tell you, oh, no, no, yeah, that's just how much stuff costs at weddings, and I can create reasons why. So everybody's bought into that is my point, right? And that's to your advantage because the money that comes being a wedding videographer is going to be way more than it is way being more. an artist. Like, And you do more like doing shooting music videos. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Less work. Mm. Way less work. I remember somebody I knew talking about how much they paid corporate, um, like pay for a commercial in corporate. And you'll look at some of these commercials, and like the budgets are like on at the bottom end, like a hundred k. At some of these companies, I'm like, they did that, man. I got people I paid three hundred dollars that look, do look way better, than, yeah. better than this, mm. right? But they serving artists, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? They're serving the wrong market. So it's really about again, really just engrossing yourself, asking hella questions. Any audience, when when it comes down to business, ask the questions. best thing you can do is ask people questions your customer what they need what they're Mm -hmm. looking for what they like what they dislike did you have this happen before like did you get pictures before what did you like about that process what could have been better and how can your life be made easier you'll start to realize that there's patterns in the things they say and then you just start to solve those problems for them proactively use it as a pain point when you're advertising Mm -hmm. and they might not even well so yes pain point 100 and when they go through the process though some of the things you wouldn't necessarily use in a pain point on advertising because it just might not hit as an advertisement. Okay. But if you solve it for them, even if they don't know why, mm. they'll feel the benefit. That is smoother. And stuff. Yeah. Okay, and, okay. and they'll be like, oh, he was just amazing. I don't know why, but something about him, man, he's just amazing. They recommend you. For sure. Right? And another thing, wedding specifically, like if you can get attached to a wedding planner or a venue, that's a big thing in, in, in weddings, man. Like, cause they just recommend the same people over and over again. Mm-hmm. So that's a, something that you might not be able to use in some spaces, but um, but in the video videography wedding space, they got a short list because me as a venue, how can I serve? Yes, I provide a venue, but how do I um, DJ? And- yeah, D, I need these things on a mm-hmm. short list because that makes me look better mm-hmm. to provide a wedding planner that's actually going to follow through. And then you become a part of this shortlist, whether it's on a wedding planner shortlist or a venue shortlist or something like that. You're getting business that's just coming to you. Like I got a like a wedding planner homie that basically like doesn't ever look for new weddings. That's crazy. You know, it's just 
some recommendations for clients yeah. who thought it was a dope and also just the venue she's the preferred person to run the weddings and it all comes to her wow so last question what do you think stops artists from achieving their dreams the most themselves it's just people in their own head man mm -hmm. uh, we buy into the industry being evil and of course evil things get done but they get done everywhere man and the industry is made up of people mm. so you know what i mean i meet you you're technically in this industry you know that has it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on in some of these back rooms and certain of the certain parties and things like that so you people one think they have to do something while just to have any kind of success and once you believe that you're already going to slow yourself down because why do i actually want to go there subconsciously you know what i mean why would i continue down a path that i don't agree with mm -hmm. you know what i mean or i'm afraid low-key so that puts themselves in a standpoint um certain place and then you have a fixed mindset i don't look to grow and realize that this is a process i just want it now versus understanding that i'm here today i need to go acquire a set of skills all right that are that make me viable to other people. Because the worst thing that we do with artists is make them believe that the world should come to them. Mm -hmm. And that actually came from, in my opinion, the period of time when artists were getting violated. Like, because what they would do is, I'm gonna control the rest of the business. Artists, you should just focus on this. Yeah, you mean like artists, like when they had sponsors and stuff sponsors like that? Sponsors or just the, you know, you got a record label deal. All you gotta mm -hmm. do is focus oh, on okay, business. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Whatever it is, okay. like all those, but all that, it's the same thing. You go back, it's like sponsors, you look, look at the Medici's, like all that shit. Like just, the artist, just stay in your artist bag. I'm gonna control everything else. And you just do that. Hmm. But when you look at it at the end of the day, when artists were in that type of mentality, historically, that's why artists have gotten violated and didn't get the value of being, mm -hmm. an, being an artist. So continuing that mentality is only gonna, one, put you in a position where you're probably gonna get violated, mm -hmm. or two, keep you from taking the actions from doing anything beyond the art because you've convinced yourself that there's no way your art can be great or you just don't have the ability to create something great if you're doing anything else at all yet somehow you're still working a day job you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like artists just put themselves in a in a mind fuck i was talking to dj Payne one shout out to him and he said something that i think like sums it all up really great he's like if you wake up you're gonna have problems everybody has problems that they encounter once they wake up mm -hmm. but the problem is in the music industry artists are dreaming about their problems before they even wake up. Mm. So it's like they just never, they create these monsters. Man, I just had a conversation you know with I mean? somebody just like talking about exactly what you're saying. That's the issue. That's the issue. So mm. you're up here talking about a bad deal or getting violated when nobody mm. actually wants to do a deal with you because you've only dropped two songs and you only have 10 followers. Mm. Like, why are you wasting time even thinking and about energy that. on something that has nothing to do with you and probably looks completely different by the time you get there? Mm. Wow. Well, I appreciate you coming. Um, could you give them your social medias and tell sure. them where to get your marketing, get your branding if they you know, want to come to you? Just hit me up at Brandman Sean on Instagram. Um, and even bigger, y'all follow No Labels Necessary on Instagram. And that'll take you everywhere you need to go. Plenty of great education and plenty of dope people who are uh, following that page. So y'all hang around that page. You'll, you'll run into some people, and some good names that might help you out with your career. Most definitely. Gravity Films, Brand Man Sean, and we out. Aha!